Right guys, welcome back to the Vegan Gentleman Studio. Today we've got Pat in the chair. How are you doing, man? Good. You yeah. good? Good, yeah. good, mate. So what are we doing today? What's the plan? Um, I like to kind of keep it the same ratio, but this is uh, too bushy and stuff, so thin out the top. Mm -hmm. Mostly scissors around. You can like you can go a little tighter on the sides. Okay. But, um, mostly just like debulk and everything because it frizzes up a lot. So how are you how are you wearing it day today? What do you normally do? Give me an idea, a little run through how you style your hair. Um, I usually just I do a little leave-in conditioner to try to keep it from uh, like frizzing up too much, but I kind of leave it messy. Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you, and do you like it to look quite messy at the neckline and around the ears and stuff? You don't want it to be too tight around the ears, right? Uh, you can clean up the ears. The back is is all right, like a little messy. So you want like a, oh, so you want to, you want to, you want the ears a bit tidy and a bit more length. Do you want more length at the back compared to the sides? Uh, like a, uh, just a little bit. I think. Just a little bit. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, quite a unique bespoke haircut this for you, isn't it? This isn't really what you see around, is it? It's something that you like yourself or if you saw this on somebody else or um i mean that's usually how i i kind of just usually just get it trimmed like that i mean okay. you can you can kind of do it what, what yeah i'll do whatever you like but yeah. yeah the thing is though the only thing i'm getting is that when you pick bits out that you like right the hardest thing is you've got to make it all balanced mm. so when you want it the sides a little bit short to leave a little bit longer at the back just take a bit off the top you can't you can't just pick bits out that you like everything's kind of got to flow okay. the thing i'm worried about is that if i take the side shorter you're gonna end up with a mullet. Yeah, okay. Instantly, because yeah. that's that's what it is, right? Yeah. So I, I've you've got to kind of that's what I mean. That's when you if you say oh just take a bit off here, little bit off here, bit off here, it, it's got to flow. Otherwise, right. it will literally just be exactly that, and it won't really look like a hair. It'll look like yeah, I don't want a mullet. It so. won't look like a hair, cut or, and it will look like yeah. a mullet. Yeah. So you don't, so you don't want a mullet, no, because it looks yeah. like one now. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. It does look a bit like one now. So you, you don't you don't want that effect. No. No. Okay. So two options, right? You either tidy the neckline. Or you leave the leave it sitting on the ears. There's no, there's, there really is no other way of doing it, unfortunately. Um, so we either keep the same length all over the back and sides, mm. and we leave it just touching the ear, a little bit natural on the neckline, or we keep the same length on the back and sides, but we take it off the ear and tidy the neckline. You can take it off the ear. Off the ear, and yeah. you want me to tidy the neckline as well, because that will that will mean straight lines or at least some sort of like length removal at the bottom, so you won't have the flicks. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay, do we? And then with the top, um, do you do you wear it one way or the other, or do you I, just run your fingers through? I usually know? comb it this way, but it, once it way. dries, it just goes. Like, it just looks messy anyway. Okay, okay, no worries. Um, it looks as though it's been cut into a parton as well. But if it dries, if it doesn't dry into a parton, I wouldn't cut it into a parton. Okay. Because it will just look asymmetric. Yeah, I had my friend to cut my hair last time, so. Oh really? Yeah. Oh nice. Ma not. That might be why it is. <laughs> he's not a barber. Is he a barber? No, he's not. Oh, okay, that's why. Uh, that's probably why it's a bit like that. Yeah. So the best way to do it, if you don't want to lose a load of length of it, the best way to look at it is how much is coming over the ears. Okay. So we will literally just take off whatever is coming over the ears. Yeah. It's the best way to do it because you still maintain some length in there. Then, then I'll thin it out for you, um, and then with the top, just connecting so it all kind of balances. Like you said, like, I know you said about the ratio being similar. That's probably what will work better on the back and sides for you as well. Um, all right, great. And then obviously maybe just a touch longer on top, just for your face shape. If it was, if it was all the same length, it would bring your jawline out wider because you're very lean, but you've got a slightly diamond face shape because it can caves here, comes out then in a bit. So we need to keep more length through here to kind of balance it. So I'll show you what I mean by that. But the comb on there comes very straight, right? If I just showed the camera, it comes very straight up and off, but look where it can caves at the side bends. Yeah. Right. So we need to maintain length through here as well because otherwise it will, if we go too short there it will or an up here as well it will just kind of make your face look really wide and we don't want to do that we need to create a bit more a bit of a leanness and a balance to the yeah. face all right so i think that's probably good that you are keeping length in the air all right um, in terms of length on the back on the, on the top sorry we can work on that together we can just look at the back and sides is doing and go from there but I'll, i won't make it like super super neat though okay i'll try and keep it as natural but like tidy looking yep. if that makes sense yeah, yeah I agree. um any issues you're having with at the moment like what what is it what is it that you're struggling with is is it the frizz is that what you is that what you're struggling with more yeah i mean when it gets to this length it's just kind of it's it's tough to maintain like it's I hard to maintain i just do a leave-in conditioner will kind of weigh it down and then it looks better but okay so so you don't want it to be as big as it is now yeah yeah definitely not right okay okay um hmm okay that might be hard because okay. you've got thick curly hair, yeah. unfortunately. Um, but we can try. We can definitely thin out a lot so we can try and separate the curls. That'll be definitely something. Um, um, let's get a shampoo. Let me, let me just wet it down, condition it a little bit. If you've already shampooed yesterday, yeah. I'm not going to do it again. Yeah, okay. I'll recondition it and then we'll, we'll, we'll get it cut in. All right for you? All right, cool, man. So are you from New York? Yeah, from New York. I can tell, man. Yeah. The accent's very strong, man. 
25, 30 minutes for the city. Oh, wow, nice. Right, so, just conditioned again, because we've done it yesterday, mm -hmm. so we didn't need to do it again. And now we're gonna work scissor over comb on this, okay? So again, we're just gonna, we're just gonna give them a trim. That's essentially what it is. But the difference with this will be, it's balanced. Um, it'll be taken in and hopefully it'll be it'll look as though um it's more of a, a uniform finish i i would say because the back and sides as we kind of discussed at the start is a little bit mullet-esque yeah. yeah. shall we say so e even just little things like that sometimes make a big difference is what i find what we need to do here is i need to do a horseshoe section on this because we need to cut these back and sides in first before we start doing anything else Quite flat at the back there as well, guys. So if you look at that, it's quite flat. Looks as if the bone doesn't really protrude much. So it's good that we're keeping some length in it because we can create a nice rounded back to uh, the back of Pat's head as well, which is nice. Looking that round, like so. Cool, so that is all in now. So this is where the symmetry is gonna come in. Okay, again, I know I do a horseshoe a lot, but it works. This for me is when you're doing somebody, like say you're, I don't want to be harsh to your friend, but say when you're fixing a haircut, right? Because I'm like, it's not that bad. But when you are, if, you, if you're trying to do a haircut, let's say a DIY haircut, or you're doing something that maybe is different to how you do it, for example, giving yourself that separation with a horseshoe section just allows you to focus purely on the back and sides and building up. So that's why I always use it. It works so well for me. I'm going to start trimming down. So I'm going to keep the length. I always do maybe, it's like the width of my size five comes where I start because I want to maintain some length up here, okay? Straight in, up, and then I'm gonna take off about that much. You can see all the short bits and long bits here, so I'm gonna go for that short bit there. And start with that as my guide. I'm gonna keep everything nice and shallow. Right, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, for everyone watching, I'm gonna use a white comb, okay? Not the most ideal comb to do scissor of a comb with, but I'm gonna sacrifice it for the viewers, okay? Back in again, so good thing about scissor of a comb, I've just walked away, where did I start? I don't know, lift it up. Oh, there we go. There we go, and I'm back in now again. There we go, there's my, there's my guide. So, you see, keeping it nice and thin. There's the guide above it that I'm using. And I'm keeping the comb, the teeth angled towards me, I'm trying to layer the hair on top of each other like this. So it all lies flat, and I'm gonna create that shape. So it's gonna kick out like this at the bottom here to create the flatness. There we go. So I don't want to take loads of length off the bottom. Remember, we want to still keep um, length in there. We don't want to create a taper or anything at all. We just want to create a nice tidy finish along the bottom. That's all we want to do. So as you see, normally if I was doing scissor of a comb, I'd go a little bit so it's closer to the, to the neck and work it up and off. But we don't want to do that. But we still need to go a little bit tighter because we still need to create shape in uh, Pat's um, back of the head as well. So I'm going a little bit tighter but nothing that's going to look like a taper or scalp exposure, nothing. Coming across, picking it up, guide from the right hand side, doesn't matter how much is coming through the cone, makes no difference. Follow on a guide, we're happy with the guide. I'm going to follow that. I'm just sticking to it, so as I pick it up, I'm doing a quick glance to the right, looking at the guide, and then taking off what's necessary. Pick it up, nice and straight. Guide, cut, pick it up, just keep doing that. Well, I can see where your friend's probably been a little bit nervous to go around your ears here, because there's quite a lot of length on them bits there, which is totally understandable. This is where clients like Pat would probably struggle sometimes to go into certain places. Have you found that yourself, Pat? Yeah. Where it just becomes a clipper, a clipper job, for example, right? Um, and I think if you, if anybody is watching, and this goes to young barbers now, any young barbers or hairdressers or stylists or whatever is watching, right? Please don't dismiss a technique. Because the, if, if, I, if I wouldn't have started 22 years ago, and I'd have started five years ago, I wouldn't know this method at all. 
because it is, it's not taught a lot anymore. Um, and if I was too quick to dismiss something, then I would never have met Pat to do this haircut. And I would not maybe get future clients from the back of this haircut or be able to learn how to leave hair a little bit longer, a bit more natural around hairlines. Oh, that was the top of the end. Loads of length. You really don't need all that. It's not doing any favours. I think it's just probably going to make it harder. Because if Pat was saying at the start that it kind of brushes it over to one side and then it just dries the way it wants to, it's probably not helping when it's got the undercutting because it will grow, it will dry how it wants to. And curls, curls need uniform. They need, they need a, a symmetry to them to create a, a nice finish, I think, especially on guys anyway. There was an awful lot of certain parts here because obviously from the last cut where the sides were a bit short in the back. So again, got my guide. That's what I'm using. I'm going to move on to my size five cut now, just before the taper in there. So I'm doing, just going to tidy this up for now. So just give a tidier finish. Again, not looking for a stubble, not looking to create anything too heavy and just looking to detail. Okay, so I'm not going into hairlines. You can see the hairlines there. I'm just creating a strengthening, or strengthening it, should I say, more than creating. Take it off the ears. Again, I'm not going to loop it too high around. So that way we can manage Keep a bit more length overall in the neckline as well. I'm just working to the ear, like so. So you watch this, it won't it won't look like a big loop. It'll just look like it sits really nice and close to the ear. So again, often for that tidy finish, but without it being like a, a clip of the effect or anything like that at all. I'm going to put a slight line in it, just for symmetry, like so, really wide, just to balance into the ear, like so, like so. Right, so we'll just fine tune the ears and the neckline now. Just making sure everything's sitting nice. I'm going to kind of break that up a little bit for him as well. Just do that like that. What we'll do is coming out from the crown because we, we need to work with the way the hair naturally falls. We're, you can push it over to one side if you want, but but I wouldn't cut it into a part for you because it will not stay. It will just slowly fall back and then it'll end up like this. Okay, I'm gonna cut it uniform. Okay, pick it up now. So look what's going on here. A little shorter bits through there. I think are probably the better way to go. That's where it's been thinned out the last time. I think that's probably a good length to start from. If that's okay with you, Pat. That's good. It's about that much off. Is that all right? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Now we need to keep this nice and blunt. Okay. We need to keep the ends really, really straight and solid because if you don't, sometimes if you point cut into them or if you use thinnesses on this hair, it will just completely shatter. Okay, so it's a lot more fragile than mine, your hair. Okay, um, curls usually are. You've just got a lot of curl, you know what I mean? You've got a lot of hair. Uh, the individual hair is, isn't very thick, it's just that you've got a lot of it. So you've got to kind of, you know, just, just be careful with certain, certain uh, ways of getting it cut. So you always want to try and keep it cut blunt. Okay, so next time you get it cut, just try and ask them to um, do it this way, straight across. Okay, don't don't ask them to point cut too much like this. You can do it. You can do little bits of it, but just not a lot. Put that up as well. You see how dry it is at the ends. Of course, it is there. Push that up. You got all them little joints. You see how the ends are quite split. Now, guide, guide. Going right back to the recession point as well. We do very small sections now because you want to connect it in. Like so. And with this bit, we can work this all the way back, drop it around the crown, and start to connect in this crown while we're here as well. I 
this is where you'll, we'll start to notice a lot more length. But there's quite a lot of length on the right hand side, to be fair, but I think there's a lot more over this side. Just off center, I'm not cutting it right on the round of the head here at this angle, I'm just over here like this, matching. Because you always try and leave a little bit of corner in there, just basically skip a section on, straight onto the sides. And that still creates a nice balance as well. Bottom of length there as well. Guide, guide. There we go. We're just using that guide to taking off that little point that is basically the, the overhang that we don't need. There you go, see? Take the point away. Go to the crown, you're going to see a lot of length coming off. So you're working it lower down. See, I'm started up here and kind of dropping it down now. As you match the middle, see, we're matching up. And then to match. So I'm going to find my guide before. There we go. Just there, see that? That's what I'm looking for. Now, I think when you look at the before photo, or the before video of this, I think it's going to look very deceiving. Because that was, a, that was a lot of all over the place in that haircut then. But you couldn't see it because of the, because of your curls and your mm -hmm. thickness. It was really hidden well. So, I mean, if a friend who's cut your hair 10 times makes it look like that when you come in, I'm hoping it looks absolutely perfect when I do it, mate. I'm gonna add a little bit of thin out to this. Okay, so here's where the tape thickness away. Now, the way I do this, you can do two, you can do it a few different ways. You can do a ribbon where you twist it and slide through. I'm actually gonna do it where I point cut the root, because I think your hair's that thick, it can get away with this. So I'm gonna base it on the hair texture. Pull it away and point cut the root. I'm gonna work up like so. So more than just getting a pair of thin scissors and cutting straight in with a very serrated edge, I'm doing the same thing, if not better, with a blunt finish. And also look, I'm not doing just straight lines, I'm literally working sporadically all over the hair like that. And I think sometimes certain people's hair can sometimes look you took a bit too much off or sometimes you need to keep going over it. Whereas now I'm kind of in control, I can feel it where I need to take more off. The crown needs to come up, come, come off there, but here's feeling fine. You know, you start to really feel it. You just mix it up by working through it like that. A bit chunkier, a bit chunkier. Come from underneath, pulling it out. There's my crown that I'm taking shorter. With the curls, it'll sit quite nice. I'm just gonna trim the end of the crown. A little bit more on this side here because it's kind of, again, it's, there's a lot more, more surface area here away from the crown. Now, put a little bit of this product in, it's called Days of Dirt, okay? It's from California. The only thing is, gotta let it dry natural, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, it looks a lot like I'm getting a haircut, I can't tell if I want more off or not because it looks so different when it's dry. I know, exactly. It's hard work, isn't it? It's hard. Yeah. What I'm going to do, for the, for the purpose of today, I'm just going to dry it very, very slowly with a diffuser, mm -hmm. just so you can kind of see, yeah. okay? Great. Because, you know, so I'm not being, like, overly kind of, like, twisty and pulley and running my hands through your hair. I don't want to create big volume. I actually want to make this sit flat for you so you can see exactly what it'll look like when it's dry. So I wouldn't probably dry any more of that now. I'd just let that dry naturally now. I think any more heat and I've got to start using my fingers through it to kind of get to the root of it. It might start, uh, it might start making it big. But let me just show you the mirror so you can kind of get to see how it finishes as well. So I want you to, um, let me just take this gown off you a second so you can kind of see. Is the length looking okay straight on though, what you can yeah. see now? Yeah, you happy good. with that? Yeah, yeah cool, great. cool. So as you can see, the fringe still comes over to one side, the hair still brushes over to one side. I just didn't cut it over to one side, okay? Mm. Just because if it does get to the way you're saying, and even after a few weeks or a few months, you don't want this. Mm. You still want the same square shape. Okay, but I think it looks lovely on you, right? I really do. Um, you know, hold that for me. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to look at yourself through there to see yourself in that mirror behind you in a second. So if you lift that up for me, can you see yourself? Yeah. That's the back. Mm -hmm. So you see the way it's not, it's tidy, but it doesn't look like we've cut it, if you get what I mean. Yeah. You can see it's had a cut to it, but it doesn't look like a mullet, <laughs> which is the main thing. If you look at that side, it's probably better in the light. So you see the way it's cut, but you've got the shape and the balance and everything sitting in there. Yeah, that's great. I, it doesn't, you know what I mean? It doesn't, it, that's one thing I want to try and keep. So there's still length through here, but again, if I pull, pull it behind you here like that, it's still tidy. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't look like it's been looped over. And then obviously you've got the kind of length just at the bottom just to keep that kind of natural vibe going with it as well. Yeah. 
Happy yeah? Oh great, awesome. that's great. Thanks Pat, thanks Thank very you. much man. You're welcome. Thank you mate. So that's pretty much it man. Yeah? Yep. Thanks Pat. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you.